Hi, Hannah. Good morning. Who are you? You holding a picture of yourself? How's it going? Oh, mommy. It's a breakfast for the win. All right, we gotta go. Okay, I love you. Bye. Mwah. Hey, you just changed. You ready to go? Love you so much. Mm -hmm. Hopefully I'll see you Sunday. Love you. Love you too. Dang, we got in here just as it started raining, so good timing there. What's up everybody? How you doing? Good morning. Welcome back to another episode. Kendall and I are headed back to the hospital for round four of chemo. Hopefully just a couple of days. Supposed to be two days of infusions. Uh, both um, both days, I think it's 20 hours of infusions, so I think, let's see, today's Friday, Friday to Saturday, Saturday to Sunday, Sunday night, Monday, hopefully we're out of there, I don't know, we'll see, but Kendall is looking fly as always, so that's what we got going on, and hopefully we're not super late getting to the hospital with rain and traffic and all that stuff. Daddy. Yeah. What? Why did they do a stem cell collection? Um, like why did they collect my stem cells and then and then they put it back into me? Uh, because you might need them later if you get sick or if they need to do other treatments, they'll they'll use them and give them back to you to help make you feel better. <laughs> I know. We made it to the hospital. Let me share something that's very frustrating with you guys. Uh, I have a very large truck, Chevy 2500 as you see, that's what we use, that's our tow vehicle for the RV and for road trips and stuff. This parking garage has very specific oversized parking spots and then there are people with Honda Accords and small trucks and little compact cars parking in the oversized vehicle area very frustrating because then you have people like myself that have vehicles that are too tall to fit in the rest of the parking garage or guys like that that have a roof rack and cannot get to the rest of the parking garage meanwhile you've got CRVs in the oversized spots don't be that guy come on come on all right kiddo you ready to do this yeah. all right Rain? Yeah. Yeah. All right, so she's getting prepared to access Kendall's port. I showed you guys the port before, but this is like a, it's like a needle that'll go into the port. And then there's, what's the little foam thing? What do you guys call that? A bio patch. A bio patch, which just helps keep keeps things clean and sanitary. Does that absorb stuff? Is it like a sponge that's like meant to? It's got chlorhexidine in it. Ah. So it's keeping the disinfectant right there on the site to prevent any bacteria. Sure, from okay, cool. Multiplying. So this is what we call a Huber needle. It very specifically has the correct angle that we need, and it is a non-coring needle. So instead of like a straw sticks into an apple, you'll you'll get a piece of the apple yeah. in the straw. This has a very special tip that keeps it from coring out the inside of the port. Interesting, because the inside of the port is like a it's not silicone, it's but kinda, it's it, something that's self-sealing though, right? Yes, After exactly. each exactly. each penetration mm -hmm. of it. All right, you're a right, champ. You ready, sweet girl? One, two, three. Good Let's job. In. Perfect. Beautiful. What we're looking for. Here's Mr. Bio Patch. I'm gonna put my little wings down. The wings are just for me to hold on to. In this way a little bit. Beautiful. There we go. Try 
trying not to get skin folds in there. Rockstar, you're awesome. And now we wait. So since her port's been accessed, uh, they'll draw blood, or they drew blood already. I'll send that down to the labs, and we're waiting to get some of the blood work results back. So they look for hemoglobin to be at the right place. They're looking for platelets to be high. They're looking at hydration levels, things like that, uh, before we can get started. The other day she was here for a quick checkup, and her platelet levels were not high enough. So we're hoping in the last four days that those levels have come up high enough that she can start chemo. So in the meantime, we'll just hang out here and uh, we'll enjoy the view. Look at that view. Come on. Fingers crossed, yo. Okay. Fingers crossed. Okay. <laughs> Hydrate or die. <laughs> hey, Cher. What's up? You ready for St. Patrick's Day? All right, we're good to go. We are now in a full room instead of just a little pod that we were in before while we waited on the results. So she's hooked up to the IV pump. She's got some, just some fluids going, hydration, things like that. And then this is some anti-nausea medicine just to get ahead of that before they start chemo. So um, that's where we're at, that's what we're doing. Kendall, how you doing, how you feeling? You look like a million bucks. Getting a little tired and bored? Yeah. The good news is this fourth round of chemo is quick. Uh, two days of infusions, couple hours, I think, for each day. Um, I was confused. I was thinking it was 20 hour infusions, but that's the immunotherapy that we'll do later down the road. I was just reading too many different things. I think I got confused on that one. But, anyways, a couple hours today, a couple hours tomorrow. And then um, they'll keep an eye on her hydration levels uh, and keeping her bladder flushed because of one of these medicines, which is called Dox. I'll get the exact name of it. I'll put it on the screen. It has the potential to cause some blood clots and stuff in the bladder, um, and you'll see some blood in the urine potentially. So they want to keep an eye on that, really flush things out. So they might keep her that Saturday night into Sunday, and then hopefully we can go home Sunday. So just a couple of quick days here for this one. Um, they're not expecting anything crazy, no nausea really, but they do want to get ahead of it just in case. That's it. We'll see how this plays out. You guys got to see this sign I made too for the door for Kendall. So we've got a laser cutter at the shop. So her name is etched into this iridescent acrylic. And then I just put a few holes in it. And then we can hang it on the door when we get here. Pretty cool. So this doxorubicin is one that they referred to me once, and I think it's commonly known as the Red Devil. And when they told me that, I was like, you can keep that name to yourself. Um, I don't know why they call it the Red Devil. I don't really know that I want to know why, but that's what this is. Um, it runs pretty quick. If you guys have never seen the chemo, the first time I ever saw it, it was like this big... They, and they obviously, lots of different drugs and different doses come in different ways sometimes and it's, it's in a more traditional IV bag like that. And other times it's just this, there's a syringe, but this is a very light sensitive um, drug, chemical in here. So they put it in this bag, but it's just a giant syringe in here. And this is just pushing it down and then obviously through the catheter and into Kendall there and I just remember the first time I saw them putting all that together and starting it the feeling that goes through you as a parent as they start to uh, start to do that to your child it's like a lot of anxiety around that one but it was also like the necessary thing that you needed to happen to save your kid so anyways the red devil tonight's dinner is Brought to you by Moe's. A little Taco Friday action, thanks to DoorDash. The cafeteria is under some sort of construction and they've got a very limited food selection down there. A bunch of snacks and drinks, but then 
at lunch, it was like chicken fingers and french fries was your only option. And they stopped serving at 4, I think, 4, 4.30. So DoorDash was kind of the only option. So tacos it is. Kendall, what'd you get? Quesadilla? Quesadilla. Mmm. Good morning. It's uh, about 9.30. It was a long night last night. A lot of fussing around there. Having issues with Kendall's port and the flow uh, through the line into the port. And um, they kept, they ran at midnight, having issues with it, trying to flush it out. Uh, and then at 3 or 3.30 or so, they decided to take the dressing off of it and redress it because they thought it was like pulled at a weird angle and it was messing with the flow of it or whatever. So they got that squared away. It was kind of a pain to deal with, but. It wasn't like painful or whatever. It was just like annoying, really. So, got that squared away. That's all good. Flow seems great. They tested things again this morning. No issues there. So, all good in the hood. Kendall is sleeping back there. Just waking up, it looks like. Good morning, beautiful. How are you? Good. Sleepy. Can I see your port? Let's take a look. Yeah, looking good. You look <laughs> like you're half asleep still. You didn't like getting woken up all night, did you? Yeah. But you feeling good though? You feel fine? Oh, how are your eyes? She's wearing glasses because one of the side effects of the docs, uh, whatever it was called, I can't remember all these medicine names. Um, one of the side effects of that medicine last night is light sensitivity. And they were surprised it was happening so quickly. They think that this is what it is. This is my thought as well, that uh, her eyes were hurting. She was complaining about her eyes hurting. We ended up getting an ice pack to kind of put over her eyes. And they think it was light sensitivity. So I turned off a bunch of the lights in the room and turned off the TV and made sure the screen brightness on her iPad was turned down. And it went away after a little while. One of the last maybe half an hour or something and uh, then her eyes felt better but we have to be very careful going outside and being in the sun a lot for a little while I don't I need to find out how long but she's very light sensitive at this point so that's a thing otherwise eyes are good you're not feeling sick your tummy's okay ish Does your tummy kind of feel funny okay um, yeah, that's where we're at right now. Mm. Love you. Love you. You're a rock star. Look like a little Picasso over here. What are you making me? The pink cow. Yeah, I've never seen a pink cow before. Is that where strawberry milk comes from? Special delivery. Just for you. Stuffed crust pizza. Don't, don't look too excited. <laughs> Today's been pretty uneventful, if I'm being honest. We took a nap. Really didn't do much of anything. It is now 5 o'clock. We got some pizza because we skipped lunch altogether. Looks pretty, pretty tasty. She is just about done with chemo for the day, which is the last bit of chemo for the fourth round, so just these two days. It's really just been quite uneventful, if I'm being honest. Good morning, day three. We are playing the waiting game. Kendall's hanging out here. She's doing well. Everything, everything looks good. Um, she's had a few random side effects again. Her eyes kind of being sensitive to the light earlier this morning, and then she had some jaw pains. But I'm not really sure what that one was about exactly. But it was a thing for about I don't know 15 minutes or so. Otherwise, we're just kind of hanging out on fluids to really hydrate, flush things out keep her hydrated for kidney function, things like that. But um, I think we'll be out of here pretty soon today. What you think, kiddo? Good. 
Good. That's about all you ever really have to say, huh? Can I get a nice big thumbs up? So at the risk of sounding repetitive, um, really pretty uneventful this weekend. But I did just get word that a friend of ours wants to take Kendall on a flight around the area this week at sunset. So this is what we have in store today. We're going on a little flight. Kendall's first flight. What do you think? You excited? Excited. Cameron, are you pumped or what? I'm so excited. <laughs> it's interesting for their first flight to be in a small private plane, general aviation kind of stuff. Uh, it's a very different feeling, obviously, than flying in a commercial plane. Tom, what is your airplane? It's a Cirrus SR-22. Is it, a, is it a turbine engine? It is not. No? No, okay. it's uh, naturally aspirated and it has a uh, parachute. Oh, cool. So the plane has a parachute system and it's the safest plane in the world. Did you hear that? Fancy. It is fancy. <laughs> we like fancy. What do you think about that one? That's like a Kendall sized plane right oh, there. Oh, yeah. yeah. And Kendall's older, shoot me, shoot me. That one's bigger. It'll, it'll just be pink and swirly, that's all. It's so echoing. Huh? Tom's the kind of guy that I want to be like when I grow up. There's about three or four of these kinds of guys. Uh, I'm an I'm a aviation like freak, Tom, but really I want a helicopter. Oh, I do too. Like badly. All right, quick little safety inspection, and then, uh, then it's time to hop up in this bad boy. You guys ready, ready to go flying? Ready to get in the air? Ready, Freddy. Get airborne. All right, let's go. Hmm. You're gonna go ahead in there, and you're gonna put those headphones on your lap. All right, step right in the middle, there you go. There you go, honey. You can jump right in there. Oh, that's so cool. All right, let me give it like a yeah, little bit of a pull. slam. Daddy, you're so excited. Me yeah? Too. All right, let me get your picture. You pumped or what? Yeah. yeah so excited. <laughs> So our plan here is to fly north, go up to Charleston, and come back and uh, just in time to watch the sunset, uh, probably on our way back as we slowly cruise back down the coast. Um, it's really funny because by car it takes us about an hour and a half, well two hours really from where we're at to drive to Charleston downtown uh, to the hospital that we, Kendall goes to. Uh, by plane I'm guessing it's probably what, 45 minute flight? 25. 25. We'll be cruising at a pretty good speed. Is this the parachute button? Handle? Yes, lever? but we don't tell the people that because we don't want people to freak Get out and pull it. <laughs> so I never tell people. Yeah. you guys are watching this amazing flight, let me fill you in on a few things. Just after we got home from the hospital, Kendall started to really not feel well at all. She developed some pretty bad pains in her eyes, her jaw, uh, her lower back, and had developed some bad mouth sores from the chemo. 
Brandy and I think that this mild round of chemo hit her harder than the last round of chemo, which was supposed to be like the really bad one. It was a little depressing for all of us to see her down and, and really not being herself at all. So having that message from Tom asking if Kendall wanted to go flying, I knew that that was exactly the adventure we needed to break her out of the funk and get a smile back on her face. She's never flown before and she talks about it all the time. And to be honest, I hardly know Tom. We have some mutual friends and stuff, but he's just a genuine good guy who's super generous, and I'm pretty sure he had a bigger smile on his face than Kendall did, knowing that he's given these girls an experience they'll never forget during what we'll likely remember to be the worst time of our lives. We couldn't be more grateful, Tom. We really, truly appreciate it. You're one hell of a pilot. Now, if you're someone that can give a kid a cool experience that's out of their norm, something to get them excited and distract them from something they might be going through, it goes a long way. And it doesn't have to be flying them in an airplane. It could be something super simple like riding in a cool car or sitting in a fire truck or building a project. But I encourage you to do something if you can. It'll change your life just as much as that kid. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next video.